We had another frost warning last night, so let me get these things uncovered. Get things put where they belong again, and uh, we'll have a little look around the garden and see what I've growing and planted out. It's June 1st today. Hi there. Where's my go here? So, yeah, like I said, we, uh, we had a frost warning last night, so it's June 1st today. We're officially into June and we are still getting frost warnings. Um, luckily we didn't get frost in my little area here. Um, I'm in Saskatchewan, Canada and it sounds like some places uh, around me did get frost but I was lucky. My yard actually stayed at uh, 5 Celsius and we didn't wind up with any frost. So. I was lucky, but I did put a lot of things away, covered things up. Some of them probably didn't need to be, but um, when you put this much work into plants and you know, you're know you this close to the season, you just kind of want to be safer than sorry. So I, I did put a few things away. But uh, got things put out now and I thought I'd just try and make a somewhat quick beginning of June video just showing you what I do have growing um, in my yard. because. Even though we've had a really cool start to spring here, I do have quite a bit actually growing when I when I look around at things. So thought I'd uh, bring you along. So we're starting the garden, and uh, you might say, "Well, you still have things covered," but this is just my insect netting. These are my brassicas. Um, well, one bed. I have three beds full of brassicas. Um, so I'm gonna just try and pop the netting back a little bit, and let you have a look at what's in here. So this bed that I was sitting in front of has some kale in the back. So I have uh, red Russian kale, dinosaur kale, and I think it's just called dark green kale. And the kale's doing pretty well. Um, it would be happier without the netting on it. And this bed, I think I probably will take the netting off of, maybe even today, we'll see. It hasn't had too much uh, too much bug pressure, and I think the plants are all big enough now that it shouldn't matter. Uh, and then you can see the larger plants here are celery, so I have four celery. And then you might be able to see just tiny little bits of green kind of popped in around the celery and between the celery and the kale, and that's some pop ch choy that I just... Uh, Kind of popped in there not an ideal location but I, I had a tray of it so i just thought i'll pop it in and just eat it young before it gets to be a bigger plant they are a baby bok choy so they don't get huge uh, over here i have kohlrabi so i have a purple and white kohlrabi a couple rows in the front and then my brussels sprouts are in the back there's jade cross and long island so i have two plants of each I think this might be the furthest I've gotten Brussels sprouts to grow in my first uh, planting. You can see I have a few weeds coming up in there as well. That's what happens when things are netted. I don't don't notice the weeds. But I think I'm just going to leave the nets pulled back for today, let the sun shine on them, and, and uh, we'll see how things go here. This bed has an assortment of spinach, lettuce, uh, there's some... <clears throat> There's some uh, radishes, some onions, and more bok choy, I believe, in with the onions there. And I'll just pull this netting back for you. This bed is my cabbage. I have Copenhagen, Petrina, uh, Mammoth Red Rock, another variety I can't remember. Yeah, there's a couple I can't remember what they're called down there. Um, and then there's some onions popped in there. And volunteer lilies, because they seem to come up in this bed, so I just keep pulling them out. But the cabbage is doing really well too this, this early spring. It's made the cabbage very happy. Okay, 
this bed is looking beautiful. Onions are starting to size up here. And then I have some uh, cauliflower. Uh, I don't remember all the varieties in here. I know this is, I'm pretty sure this is early snowball because I just put those in. Whatever was there just dried up and died out on me. And then down at the other end is, at the other end there is broccoli. And they're all looking really good too. There's like Imperial Gypsy Green Magic is the smaller ones. I just added those in as well. I don't think I had any when I went to plant before. So they're looking really great. I'm happy with this. But so far, I think it's a cool spring. The flea beetles have not been a, much of an issue. Had a few on one of the plants, um, but I haven't really seen much action from them. So that's been nice. Whenever I show these uh, nets in my videos, I invariably get at least a few comments asking where I got them. Uh, they were all purchased on Amazon. And up until recently, the green and yellow netting hasn't been available for a couple of years that I know of. But I just received a notification from Amazon that there's a new seller selling this exact brand again. So um, I'll put new links. I'll try and find the links to those and put new links in there for you if you want to check it out. They're not cheap nets, but I have had them for years. I do really like them and I, I personally think they're worth spending money on. But I know a lot of people also just go to the fabric store and get tool, it's called. It's kind of like that uh, netting that you'd see like under like kind of ball gowns or wedding dresses or that sort of thing. I've never tried that. I don't know how well it holds up to um, the sun shining on it uh, and the wind blowing on it. Um, but that is another alternative if you're looking for something that uh, is a little bit more inexpensive. Um, and this netting, the same thing. Um, I believe the seller is still selling this. It is very expensive. I have two of them. I love them, had them for years, but it is an investment to make. So again, you could look at other alternatives like the uh, fabric tooling, but I will put links to these things. And as far as I understand, the links will actually lead you to products you can actually buy now. Uh, before, whenever I put a link, it's just been for the information purposes because people ask about it. Um, but yeah. On to what else is growing. I have potatoes planted at the back of this bed. I did a video on that. Uh, down here I have some various types of squash, winter, summer, pumpkins growing just in pots. I think you can see them there. They're just waiting to get planted out and then a whole bunch of dahlias just waiting to get planted out. Begonias, some herbs, some liatris, some rebecca. Oh, you can't see those guys. Leatris and Rebecca down there. Uh, so that's all just waiting to get put out in the garden. And then this giant ghost is my cucumbers. And now, yeah, the covering was good for the frost, but it has been so insanely windy. Just trying to get a moment in here to do this between gale force winds. Um, so I actually have this on them to protect them from the wind because it's just been bonkers. So I'll unclip them a little bit and you can have a look. Um, it's very risky that I have my cucumbers out already in my area. Usually I could pop them out by June, but it's, the weather has been very cold this year. So yeah, there's just like, we're still have a forecast of two degree nights coming up, two of them in a row. They say we shouldn't get frost on those nights because of the way the weather patterns, because of what the weather patterns are, but it's, that's cold. That's cold for cucumbers for sure. So, but I just, I put them out here when the weather forecast was looking okay-ish and then it changed again. And I just, I'm just tired of waiting for the weather. So I'm taking this risk. It's probably set them back a little bit. They are in here. So they're getting a little bit of warmth from, this is gonna be holding in a little bit of warmth, but it's mostly just protecting them from the wind. But anyways, um, what do I have here? I have a national, national pickling cucumbers. Now, unfortunately, this cloth is kind of dragging over them a little bit. So I have three of each variety, and uh, I think I'm only going to wind up with one of those that's 
I'm not going to be too hurt by the cloth hitting it. Um, then I have Quarantine. What's this? Oh, Patio Snacker. I really like this. Just a nice little patio snacker. Kind of cucumber. So you could grow this one in pots. Uh, it's a smaller type cucumber that you could grow in pots with a small trellis if you needed. Um, a Persian gherkin, Babylon, Armenian, six varieties of cucumbers I have here. Things like the dahlias and the squash, I've been sticking back in my, um, my shed when it gets cold like that at night, uh, just because they can't, can't handle this. And if I could pick up this whole bed of cucumbers, I probably would do that too. In behind the cucumbers, you might be able to see these little bits of green growing along this drip line here and that's parsnips. So when I grow my parsnips, I might be able to see there's some shiny stuff on the soil. I make a little trench and I put down, um, put in my parsnips and I put down vermiculite on top. And then I actually use either some of this, this uh, row cover like I have here, or I'll use like, um, I've used in the past old, uh, like cocoa fiber basket liner stuff, or some people use a board and I just lay it on top and that helps to hold some moisture in. Let's protect them from birds pulling them out when they start to sprout or bugs eating them off. And uh, it takes two to three weeks to get them to sprout, so you need to be patient. So this bed is waiting to get the squash planted in it. That'll be what the rest of this bed is. Over here, I have uh, three more early snowball cauliflower, just because I had three more and I wanted to get them planted there, sitting in their trays a bit long. My garlic. It was planted right up to the front here, but for some reason it didn't grow over here and right along that far side. It was kind of a, a space, so I'm not sure what happened there. There's a few daffodils coming up in this bed. I think I planted them. I vaguely remember doing that. And some are blooming. Um, there's more popping up back there. So the back of this bed is planted with corn. I just did that a few days ago, so there won't be any action there yet. And turnips I planted once and the flea beetles did eat them off. Unfortunately this row cover is not doing much to protect them and they're not coming up yet but that again I just did that when I did the corn so that was the second sowing. Like I said the first one they got about mm, that big and then flea beetles just chomped them down. And these two beds are my tomatoes and I have a little bit of lettuce, some Capa, I think it's called, romaine, and oh, and some radicchio just across the front of that bed there. And you might be able to see some green plants poking out, and that's just some pots of Cleome. Just, I had them in there with uh, a sheet over them actually to protect them last night from the cold weather, because I don't think Cleome would enjoy that, but I'm not sure. We move over to this, this area here. Um, this bed I've decided to use for my carrots again this year. It seemed to work well. Um, so I have a lot of carrots and I'll just pop you under the cover. Hopefully that gives you a good view because I can't see the screen right now. I'm sure you're seeing the shadow of my camera. But there's carrots coming up all over. So if you can see to the back, there's some that are further along. I planted those about a month before the rest. Uh, and, uh, and now the rest are all coming up very nicely. So, and I do the same thing with the carrots. I don't do the vermiculite always, and I don't. I didn't with this this planting here. Um, most of these, but the same thing with the as I do with the uh, parsnips of covering them up with something uh, until they get germinated, just to keep them keep them damp and keep them germinated. And the netting is just on here to keep the birds from plucking them out while they're small. That's all that is. Now I've been doing some rearranging in here. I have a big project planned for the summer, so I need to move things. Uh, so my big pots are kind of scattered around. You can see the gladiolas are coming up very nicely in them. I had um, ranunculus in all of them. This one, it died off. Small ranunculus. I don't think it'll do much coming up in that one. This bed has my peas in it. I'm hoping they'll grow up on this frame and uh, hopefully I'll still be able to pick them. I have them planted. It's kind of crazy. It could be interesting to get them picked, but I'll worry about that when the time comes. 
this bed here, I just recently put some beans in. I have burgundy beans, black turtle beans, and yellow wax beans for bush beans. And then I have this little setup here. I'll need to put better posts in, but it just kind of marks the space for me. Just ran out late one night. And uh, it has what's called lena beans, which seems to be maybe a white navy bean or something. Has a bit of a story. Originally, the seeds were handed out in the Depression era uh, to families in Saskatchewan, and one family saved some to plant instead of eat, and they've been keeping these beans ever since. So I just thought that was kind of interesting and wanted to give them a try. I also have beets, uh, fresh packed beets for greens, I think in this spot here. So those will be hopefully coming up soon. I did just run out and do this late one night. The rest of my big pots are over here. So there's three there and three on the other side there. And these are again, another bit of a, a dangerous move, but they have my melons in them. So I have watermelon, uh, Minnesota midget, musk melon, and tip top melon, I think. So, and then they also have the gladiolas and the ranunculus. And these, I think, all have a ranunculus in them, but some are better than others. I have a different variety of melon in each of these big pots, and I have, I think, three plants, something like that. Some of them may have extras that need to be thinned out. I was trying to show you if I could down in here. There. There's some in these in these covers. These are just from like the Dollar Tree years ago. And then I have some under a frost cloth. Let's see what it looks like under here. It's squashed. Um, so I don't know. I think the ones in the in these covers are doing better. It should heat up during the day, which was why they're there. It's not so much for cold protection at night as to get them heating up really well during the day, which should help heat the soil, which should give off some heat overnight. But And this one is missing its little thing, so any heat that's in there is coming out. But I've been leaving them closed up during the day. Plants seem happy with that heat in there. I wasn't sure if it would get too hot. See, this one's got bumped open. Um, but they seem to be doing all right, so. And then I ran out of those covers, so I just put an upturned. This is a bucket I get, uh, I used to be able to get my bird seed in. Um, and so there's just some in that bucket there. And they actually have frost cloth over the whole thing, so that's originally what I had done, and then I stuck the bucket on. Usually these uh, cap things blow away on me, so I don't use them a lot, but I put the pins in kind of pointing towards the middle. And even with all these crazy winds we've had, I've only had one blow off, so something to try. And I have longer pins than they came with holding them in. This is my uh, land of plants waiting to go out. I actually went to the garden center yesterday. I have two trays of plants there uh, that I picked up. That was $300. And then I also picked up two shrubs that were $30 each. So when I think that was $300, those two shelves there, and I wonder about what all the plants I grow, if I purchased those, I mean, I've already planted a lot out. If I purchased all these plants, what would I spend? I mean, these weren't like specialty plants, but look at this fun, this fun petunia. I'm hoping I can save seeds and get something somewhat similar. And see how the yellow one? They didn't have tags. I asked about them because I wanted to know what variety they were, but no tags, so. Uh, and then this really fun lantana. Look at the colors on that. But uh, I'll go through these more. I have a few perennial plants that I picked up. I bought more strawberries. Uh, I think those roots that I bought were just dried out too much when I purchased them. They were inside the store, which I've never found the bag inside the store before like that. So I was a little leery when I picked them up. Uh, but yeah, they're not sprouting, so I kind of think they're duds. I think they were too dried out in the store. But, so I picked up six plants, which that was why I wanted roots, because this is expensive. I think these are $4 each, and I paid $8 for a bag of, what was it, 
12 or something roots. So if they had been good, that would have been huge savings. But. Yeah, so I have lots of like uh, sunflowers, uh, some calendula, I think is what I planted here. Yeah, this is lobelia that I picked up real cheap at the box store one day. There's, I think, four or six plants of that left. I just popped them in there. And then a lot of, um, like I've got prina, petunias. There's a few more edible things left there that need to get put out. Giant parsley. I have a decorative uh, flower and kale still. It's probably for cabbage. It's probably too late to get it out and do something with. Um, marigolds. I can't wait to put these together in a pot. I think I'm going to put them together with, with these petunias I picked up. I think those colors will be gorgeous together. That's going to be nice. And then these are those, those white um, marigolds. So I think pop those into, oh, I, I'm excited for that. I can't wait to get that together. But let's see, I've done up some, oh, I planted some potatoes in pots. So look, look at that. I planted my potatoes, uh, a few of them into pots. These are some of my saved seed potato. Uh, so I have a green mountain. And I just wrote on these, these are some more Norlands, um, Omarosa, those are Norlands as well, those three smaller pots, and then a French fingerling. And I put quite a few in the bigger pots, like, I don't know if you can read the tags, but the French fingerling says nine, Omarosa says 11, and the Green Mountains has five. So it's kind of, I'm just curious to see what happens when you plant that many in those big pots. And then I believe each of these smaller pots have two in them. Oh, one I can see says three on it. But I think overall there were two. So I need to come in, get some soil and, pop, and top these up. You see how the shoots are starting to show up at the tops. Some of them are getting a little late for that. Um, but I want more soil in there so they can grow better. I've just been developing this area in the back of my yard the last few years. I had it completely different with a big old cherry tree right about where this uh, evergreen is and it got diseased and died uh, after about seven years or something here. So uh, I've just been working on getting this changed around and I'm really liking how it's coming together. This is an American highbush cranberry. I, uh, that was one of the original things. I had one on either side of the cherry, I've taken one out. This is a choke cherry. My neighbor has given me two of those uh, nine barks. It's a dark leafed one. You can't see the other one. He just gave me this year. It's just kind of behind that tray there. There's another evergreen right back in there. Nice, tall, skinny. So I'm excited to see this come together. I don't know if you can tell there's a couple of peonies in there. Yeah, this is going to look really nice. I have some asters coming up around here and some lilies. Don't mind the edging, that's from my new flower bed area. I've ripped it out, I need to deal with that still. Uh, quick walk by and you can just see the flower beds are starting to burst to life here. Not a lot of flowers other than the spring bulbs, but looking beautiful. I think I've lost this, I believe this was a wagelia here. This shrub is not coming, there's a little bit of growth right at the bottom, but I don't think it's coming back. This is my Cupid cherry right here. I don't know how well you can see it. In the glare there. And then I have a hydrangea. There's a U back there. It struggles. I think it gets a bit too much sun and not enough water there. It's another hydrangea in amongst all the uh, daffodils that you can't see. That's a cherry tree I grew from a cutting. It's starting to come together nicely here on this border. Now, I have put together my hanging baskets. So I just used that lobelia that I picked up cheap at the box store. And uh, this has the, uh, what is it called? Shockwave? Yeah, shockwave deep purple petunias. So I, grow, I grew the petunias from seed and that's all it's in there. It's just those two varieties. Um, so that's this one. 
and then I want to compare it to how this grows. So it's the exact same planting scheme, but instead of the shockwave deep purple, this is the waterfall, island waterfall mix, petunia. So, and I did, um, these planters have these neat little kind of door gate things in them. And so in every other one on this, there's a row at the bottom and then there's a middle row here. So every, every, every other one on this middle row, I actually popped in, I don't know how you can see, there's a lobelia and a petunia. And I did that on the other planter as well. So the lobelia should kind of mix in, I think, and give that kind of frothy effect in with the petunias when they start to fill in. And then again, this is the same planting scheme, but I used the um, calibrachoa that I grew. Now this was saved seed from last year. And sadly, it's the best calibrachoa that I've ever grown from seed. And they're not the best little plants. So I might wind up replacing the calibrachoa. There is a couple good ones like that down there. So I made sure any that were of the bigger ones I did put in the bottom because I won't be able to get to those to replace them. But if I need to come in, like, I mean, look at this. You can't even hardly see that one in there. Uh, so if I need to come in and replace these top ones, I thought they'd be easier to get at. And then in with the Calibrachoa seed, this seedling came up, and I actually think this is Bacopa, which I believe I had growing around the Calibrachoa, so I think I wound up with a Bacopa seed in with the Calibrachoa seeds. So I just stuck it in the middle. Otherwise, these are planted the same as the, the other two. And then you may have seen the short, where I just did a really quick short about planting this up. And so far, no sign of the nasturtiums, but there's uh, day and night nasturtiums planted around. And then uh, I believe this is oregano that I put in here and sage. Yeah, Greek oregano. And this is sage. Smells so nice. Um, but yeah, so hopefully I see some nasturtiums popping out of here soon. It hasn't been super warm, so the soil should be warm enough for the nasturtiums, but they might not quite be ready to, to pop out. If I don't see any in the next week, I'll, I'll reseed it with, I think I'm out of those seeds, but I'll find something else. And then underneath that planter is this uh, flower bed that's uh, kind of a dappled shade, early morning sunshine kind of space. see my shadow in here because there's just no other way to get it but I've put a few sweet peas in front of this trellis I used to have a great big clematis on here and the trellis was actually going uh, the other direction but I put it on an angle now it's a daylily in behind it I have planted a few uh, petunias and there's some shooting star um, these are a spring ephemeral that are just a perennial you can see they're just starting to get their buds on them, flower up, and there's one over here as well. And then I have obedient plant, uh, which I planted in one of my very first videos. Uh, there's a tag for it. Unfortunately, it's in with some sedum, so I should really get rid of that. But the obedient plant is what's coming up all over in here. And then there's a honeysuckle vine on these other two. So you can see just starting there. And it's starting over on that uh, trellis down there as well. And then lots of windflowers, ferns, some Alchemelia mollis. I uh, can't remember what the common name is for that. And I have a peony in there. It's just a real mishmash of things I love. There's some larkspur right there. But this is a really fun little space and it's right off my patio. And I find it to be a real calming area. Here's some of the hostas I put in last spring. Down over there. And I've put together some pots. So these are matching pots to some that I have down under that tree. So this is um, petunias. These are the, the petunias I grew from seed, I say from white storm petunias. A lot of them are coming up white, but I'll show you further along. There's some that are coming up kind of with purple veining and things on them. 
I believe I planted Crocosmia in the bottom of these. So that should come up later with some nice little uh, spiky grass and flowers to go in around the petunias. And then this is the same petunias, uh, but I have some smaller sunflowers in there. I can't remember if these are teddy bear. I feel like it's another smaller variety. So I'll look up what it is and put that on the screen for you. These are the uh, planters. I think I have a video of planting them or showed them being planted showed them planted up early on. They filled in nicely. So there's some flowering kale, there's some more of those, uh, I think these are those same white petunias. These might be a purple variety. Do I have a tag in here? No. Uh, there's some giant parsley. I did throw some sweet pea seeds in. I don't know if you can see right there. There's some sweet peas. These are just little, these are shorter ones. Um, they're very little pink one. I'll put the name on the screen. I grew them last year. They're really pretty. Oh, and ranunculus. That's what this is. I was trying to remember what this little thing was. So there's ranunculus in here as well. I think I'd remember that. So each of these are pretty much the same. This one's planted with just one flower and kale in the middle and two parsley on the side. And the others are the opposite. But you can see the sweet peas again starting, just starting to come up. There's one there. There's one over here. There should be more back here if I'm not getting crowded out by the petunia. Yeah, there's a tiny little one back there. So yeah, this this one, the double flower and kale on this side is, I don't know what's happened to it, but it's right here it is. And it's just like, I don't know if it just got beat around by the wind or what happened. Like this one out of all of them is just looking awful. So I do have one more. It's purple. I may put it in here just to replace that. And here, this is the petunias I put in here. I need to find the, the tag for what these are because those aren't the white ones from seed. It's a gorgeous dark purple color. I'll figure out what that petunia is because it is beautiful and I grew those from seed. So if you want to know, I'll want to know for next year. That's a beautiful petunia, that dark color. So underneath those hanging baskets. I have these planters here. Again, these I believe are all the petunias that I saved from the white storm seed. And then I've put in, um, I believe more Crocosmia. Looks like I have a tag here. Yeah, so there's Sunglow Crocosmia in those two little square ones. And then this here has a Colangela in it. Um, I can't remember, I don't know if I actually wrote down which calendula is in there, so I guess we'll find out when it comes. There's one of the uh, hostas that I planted last spring. There's another one back here. This this was here already. So was that one. Um, I'm sure there's supposed to be one right in here and one back further back there, and I just, I've not seen those come up. They may have just gotten too too dark. It might just be too cold back there yet that they just haven't popped. So these, I have three pots like this. So these have some of those gorgeous marigolds that I grew from seed as well as some salpiglosis that I grew from seed. And I think I planted acid and thera in these all around the pot. So I'll enjoy these for quite a while and then the acid and thera is going to come up and I don't know, it might choke these out. Um, but I just thought it'd be kind of a fun thing to try. And I'm really liking how these pots look. Let's see if I can get you a good shot. These three pots in here around this fire pit area. I'm really liking that look. I just picked these pots up at Walmart last year. And then these planters, I believe, also have some, I think these are Emily McKenzie. Yeah, Emily McKenzie Crocosmia, and then Selphoglosis, and I want to say Candy Tuft. I can't remember for sure. I just kind of popped those in the other day, the, this plant here, the rest I already had in. And I have a matching, matching one over here. Oh, and there must be a Nemophila. Yeah, I only had two of my Nemophila. I don't know how to say I'll put that on the screen. These are penny black. I only had two come up out of a whole pack of, well, about half a pack of seeds. So I just threw them in these pots. And then this selphoglosis, I've already replaced this once. I moved this pot, I swapped it with the other one. I don't know. 
I don't know what's wrong with this pot. They're not really. The other stuff's growing fine. I know what's going on there. So there's the matching two pots to that other grouping on the other side of this space. Here's my shade garden. I'm really happy how this is coming together. I some Salmon seal. It's this tall plant with, I don't know if you can see the little white dangly flowers there. There's hostas underneath it. Uh, there's some, some lily of the valley in the back, a still bee. There's a yew, some trolleus, morris still bee. This is a hydrangea. There's a little hosta about to pop up there. Uh, meadow sweet, I believe. This is a type of sedum. This kind of grows all over my yard. There's some flowering dogwood, creeping dogwood, I think is what this is called. It's the first year I've ever seen it flower. It's so pretty. So I have some brennera. This is, I think, maybe the first year I've ever had brennera come back. I planted three different brenneras. And this one, let me see what this one is. It's the happiest. I left the tags in because I wanted to know. So this is looking glass. It's the first time I've had runner come back over the winter. Absolutely beautiful flowers. Look at those. Uh, there's some anemone and trilliums in here. The white trilliums are just kind of finishing up. And I have these purple trilliums here. Some more shooting star. Um, hepatica. There's another one back there. There's some Tiarella just starting to come into bloom right there with a little hosta. And this is a Jack Frost runner that's coming back nicely. This is more Solomon Seal. I have, I put some seed last fall for some alum root in there. I haven't seen it come up, but it's pretty dry. It's staying really dry back there, so even with all the rain. There's some more Lily of the Valley. I've popped in, what are those? I'll put on the screen. These, there's a few of these. I should know what this is. This is an experiment. They get really tall. So that should look nice in there with a, a dark kind of bronzy plume on them. The name is just escaping me right now. Ferns, this beautiful white bleeding heart. I had to shop around to find this bleeding heart. I'm really happy with how this shade garden is coming together though. So it's been in here a few years now. These are my planters that I put in. I do plan to put something, um, like a, a trailing plant. But overall they're doing pretty well out here. And the lights keep working. Check them even on overcast days. I love that deep color of that lobelia. Look at that, that, those impatience, that shade of impatience there. Gorgeous. So this is where I planted those strawberry roots. And they just, I don't know. I mean, they might still come up and I don't want to dig at them too much, but the, the crowns just feel dried out to me. This one is definitely a dud. It's broken right off. I mean the soil's nice and moist but not too moist. But the crowns all just feel dry. So I think maybe that bag had just sat inside too long. I was hoping cause they had actually just moved stores that maybe those had just come in for quick sale to catch people coming in to see the new store but I think they had maybe sat inside too long and dried out. Here's my elephant's ears. They're so pretty when they bloom. They're kind of a bland plant when they're out of bloom. But they get gorgeous red leaves in the fall. These beautiful pink blooms in the spring. So this is my new area that I'm developing. You can see I'm still not done. I need to get a bit more paper. Oops. A bit more paper. And I'm down to buying soil now. I've gone through all my leaf molds and all my homemade compost that I have at the moment. Might have more soon, um, but it's coming. I've got lots planted. Real quick before I go through that, there's a few more hostas. 
that I put in last year, and then these are muscaris. People ask me about these sometimes, uh, so I transplanted these here, and I think they just don't get shown in videos very much. So there's the muscari I transplanted like years ago. And I still get questions once in a while on these. I love these. Group hyacinth is another name. Little peony there. A rose. A pasque flower. And I have done a lot of planting in here. So let's see if I can remember what I've put in. There's some, you can't see it in the shadows, but there's a poppy. And there's a few of those popped around. There was a volunteer uh, sweet pea there. Um, and then I have Nicosiana. Nicosiana, that's from seed that I saved. These are just the smaller, like, kind of bedding plant Nicoshana, not the big, huge plants. Uh, a couple of Cosmos. My Cosmos, I started a few inside because it was such a cold spring and they did not grow well, so I have, like, four there. Uh, this, I believe, is Candy Tuft. So along the border, I have a mix of Dianthus and Candy Tuft and the uh, petunias that I grew from the White Storm seeds. And you can see this one here. Look at this gorgeous purple on there. I have some asters, yellow, Valkyrie yellow, I think is what these are. And then um, bright eyes, chrysanthemum. There's my uh, snapdragons. Those got in really late because I just was dragging my feet on where to put them. A couple of peonies coming in there, coming in nicely. Those have been there for years. Uh, these are Prairie Sun Rebecca. There's some more Nicoshana here. So just I tried to kind of trail a few things through, so it's hopefully seems a little more cohesive. Oh, I planted seeds the other day of wild things um, squash. It was just supposed to be a really fun squash. They didn't grow well for me last year. They may overtake this bed. Um, I don't know. But I threw some in here, so we'll see what happens with those. There's more um, snapdragons kind of at the very edge there. I don't know if you can see the really tiny little guys. They'll come up. There's tall stalks. There's that pet grass. This is foxgloves that I planted in a video way back there and then they kind of swoop around and come back this way. More dianthus and that uh, pet grass. These are a mobium and I actually looked out last night and thought I'd killed them because they needed water so bad they were drooped down. I wish I'd taken a picture for you because I can't believe how well they came up after I watered them last night and then they went through that very cold night. They are looking awesome. And this is more Nicoshana, I believe, through here. This little swoop here, I believe that's what that is. And Dianthus and Candy Tuft. And then there's a couple summer berries, yarrow, in there. So I hope you enjoyed that little springtime tour of my, uh, my yard and what I have growing. This is obviously just my backyard. And I'm pretty sure it's long enough, so I'm not going to take you through the front yard. I will try and get you through there. I know I don't show up very often. Um, I like to try and be a little bit more private <laughs> in my life. So my front yard shows off a lot of the neighbor's activities and things, and I don't want them to be uncomfortable with that. But I will try and try and get you out there soon to see what's popping up. It's all mostly native plants, so that's fun. Uh, and I did just replace some shrubs. That's where the shrubs I mentioned earlier that I picked up yesterday there in the front yard so uh, yeah I I'm really happy like considering the really really cold windy nasty spring that we've been having it doesn't look like it right now what a beautiful reprieve these few hours are this morning um, but it's it's been an abnormally cold spring and uh, it's it hasn't been fun so I'm just really impressed with how well things are growing and coming up and really my brassicas are loving it but thanks for following me along through my garden this, this morning and uh, seeing what's growing. What about you? How's your garden coming along? Are you happy with things? 
are you getting anxious to get things out like me? I've put a few things out I probably shouldn't have yet, but you know, if you're in the prairies like I am or somewhere else, a short season, you might be getting antsy and just starting to just push the babies out of the nest and into the ground and, and hope for the best. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.